pieces of mantle found rising under north and south ends of the Cascadia Fault Zone. Oregon University two days ago published maps showing the Cascadia subduction zone along the Pacific Northwest coast where the shaded area encompassing the onshore and offshore areas where seismometers were located. Data from the seismometers helped the University of Oregon researchers. With four years of data from 268 seismometers on the ocean floor and several hundred on land, researchers have found anomalies in the upper mantle below both ends of the Cascadia subduction zone. They may influence the local frequency, the location and strength of earthquake events along the U.S. Pacific Northwest. We had earthquake swarms the past few days, up to uh, 5.6 magnitude on the Richter scale. The anomalies, which reflect regions with lower seismicity wave velocities than elsewhere beneath the fault line, point to pieces of the Earth's upper mantle that are rising and buoyant because of melting rock and possibly elevated temperatures. This is what Miles Bodner said, the University of Oregon doctoral student who led a study, now online, as an accepted paper by the journal Geophysical Research Letters. The 620-mile subduction zone of Cascadia, which has not experienced a massive lengthwise earthquake since 1700, when it had the 9-magnitude ma uh, Richter earthquake, the a tsunami that was felt all the way to Japan, is where the Juan de Fuca ocean plate dips under the North American continental plate. The fault zone stretches just offshore from northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino in northern California. The mantle is rising under southern Gorda deformation zone at the north edge of the San Andreas Fault and under the Olympic Peninsula and southern Vancouver Island. Quote, what we see are these two anomalies that are beneath the subducting slab in the northern and southern parts of the subduction zone, Bodner said. And he adds, these regions don't have the same behavior as the entire fault. There are three segments that have their own distinct geological characteristics. The north and south segments have increased, de increased locking and increased tremor densities, end quote. Locking refers to how strongly two plates stick. Quote, if they are stuck together tightly, as in the case here, they are building up stress, and you have the potential for the release of that stress or energy in large earthquake events, end quote. Bodner said, such quakes, while strong, are below that of the 9 plus magnitude event projected should all of Cascadia rupture at once. And he said, locking is much weaker in Cascadia's central section, which includes most of Oregon, where infrequent similar quakes tend to occur from creeping along the plates. Tremor refers to long duration seismic signals often seen as subduction zones. Quote, these happen deep and take more time than a typical earthquake as they rumble to release energy, end quote. That's what Bodner explains. The findings won't help earthquake forecasting, but they do point to the need for real-time onshore-offshore seismic monitoring and geodetic analysis, such as from GPS to help plot spatial coordinates of the anomalies as a next step in that direction, said co-author Douglas R. Toomey. He's a seismologist in the University UO of Oregon, Department of Earth Sciences. The study helps to make sense of Cascadia's historical record of earthquake, he said. The junction of the Cascadia San Andreas Faults, Tooney said, contains a lot of complexity and is the most seism seismically active part of contiguous North America. Seismic history also shows more earthquake activity in the Puget Sound area than in central Oregon. Both regions accumulate energy that eventually is released in large quakes, he said. Quote, our study is worse news for Portland northward to Seattle and for southern Cascadia. But central Cascadia is not off the hook, said Toomey. 
who also is lead investigator for the Oregon component of Shake Alert, the West Coast Early Warning Network. Quote, more frequent earthquakes to the north and south are seen in historical seismicity patterns. This research helps to understand that, end quote. The study involved deep imaging, similar to CAT scans, using different forms of seismic waves coming from distant earthquakes moving from the Earth. The ocean bottom seismic stations, from which data were retrieved every 10 months, were part of the National Science Foundation funded Cascadia Initiative. Older data from numerous onshore studies in the western United States were also included in this analysis. In addition to helping to understand Cascadia's historic earthquake record and anomalies, Bodner said, suggests that the two buoyant ends help to modulate plate coupling forces. Quote, we're looking at structures deep within the earth and finding evidence suggesting that they are influencing the mega thrust faults and controlling where we see increases in locking and segmentation. Knowing the timing and path of seismic signals, we can look at velocity variations and equate that to the, stress, the structures. With large offshore data sources, we might be able to better understand how a large rupture in the south might extend into central Oregon. This from Geophysical Research Letters provided by the University of Oregon.